The world needs to increase food production and agricultural efficiency by at least 70% by 2050, according to the World Resource Institute. One way of doing this without using more chemicals, herbicides and pesticides is by using bacteria. Well, to discuss this, we're joined in the studio by Case de Jong, chief executive of Christian Hansen, the global bioscience company that supplies the food, pharmaceutical and agricultural industries. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Case, welcome to the London Stock Exchange studios. Thank you, it's great being here. Now, you supply the food, the agriculture and the pharmaceutical sectors. How does good bacteria fit in there? Well, let me go back a bit first. When I was studying medicine, uh, the best bacteria was a dead bacteria. A lot has changed since and, and science has progressed. So we now know so much more about bacteria being sort of nature's own mechanism also to keep us healthy. And why do you think it's taken so long to discover the benefits of good bacteria? Some of the benefits were known for, for centuries. I mean, the way we make cheese and, and, and fermented milk drinks and yogurts, that, that's been out there for ages. But science has progressed, has progressed and progressed. And what we see now is that actually bacteria can help to keep humans healthy, to keep animals healthy, but even plants can, can be kept healthy by spraying the right bacteria on the land. And if we think about food waste, how can good bacteria help us from wasting food both in the supermarket and at home in our fridge? Yeah, one of the things that we found is that in dairy products the bacteria are around and they keep the products fresh and safe longer, in yogurts for instance and in cheese. But we now also see that we can reduce those massive amounts of food waste in other products like in salads and on salmon. And actually what happens is that the good bacteria, they prevent the bad ones from growing but they also suppress molds and yeast from growing. So the sick-making microorganisms are basically being pushed out by the good natural occurring bacteria. But a lot of regulators and consumers are sort of standing back from, oh, there's bacteria in my salad or on my salmon. Yeah, we, we, still the awareness about bacteria will need to increase and the differentiation between good and bad bacteria. In some countries the regulations are changing, the regulators are adopting and allowing us to use the good bacteria. And it will prevent a lot of wastage, extend shelf life for, for all kinds of food matrices. So it's important to reduce food waste, but also we need to increase efficiency in agriculture. And how do your bacteria help there? Yeah, yeah what, we've, what we've done is we've sprayed bacteria on the land. And what they will actually do is they will help the plants to grow better. So the yield of a plant where that grows on the land that's sprayed with bacteria is often some 20% better than if the land is untreated. What the bacteria do is they form a film over the root of the plants, they protect the roots against all kinds of microorganisms that want to penetrate, and they help the uptake of water and nutrition. So if you would look at the roots of the plants that are treated, they're very nice. Now the advantage of course is this is all natural. These are bacteria that are naturally occurring, and as opposed to chemicals, you don't need to treat that often because the bacteria stay in and around the plant longer. Well, you say it's natural, but you are adding it artificially to the land. Is it damaging for the landscape at all? No, we don't think so, because the bacteria that we use are naturally occurring bacteria. And they almost live in symbiosis in the ecosystem. So as long as that they are wanted and, and natural in that environment, they stay around. And otherwise, they will simply not be there. And farmers are often living on the breadline, aren't they? They will go for the cheapest option, which may be chemicals. What would you say to them? Most of the farmers, they, they do the trials with our products and they see how efficient they are. And given the fact that our products stay in and on uh, the root system much longer than the chemicals, it's actually a quite efficient solution. But more importantly, it's an all-natural solution. And when I was not so long ago visiting some of our sugarcane customers in Latin America, in Brazil actually, there was a, a, a truck in the field that had been converted to a mobile hospital. Being a medical doctor, I got interested. And then I was told that the chemicals that are sometimes still being used, they are so toxic that if the workers get exposed to them, they need to be treated on site. Well, you can imagine that a big benefit to those users is also the use of an all-natural product. Do you find that bacteria is sort of a selling point with consumers in the same way that, say, fair trade or organic is? Uh, not yet, I would say, because we still have the, the, the sort of paradigm that bacteria are not good. But we recently did a study uh, on, f on, on three continents with sociologists and anthropologists trying to figure out where the consumers are going, what drives their behavior. And what we get back is that consumers are looking now for authentic foods. They want to know where it's coming from. It needs to be safe, it needs to be fresh, it needs to be healthy, it needs to have all of that. 
and then they don't want the use of these chemical preservatives or artificial ingredients. And just briefly, you have also aligned your work with three of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen that, that our work aligns very well with uh, SDG 2, 12 and 3. So better farming, less waste, healthier people. And we've defined clear goals for the company to also drive the development of those SDGs. Well, Case, thank you very much. Thank you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in smart cities and also cyber security. Bye-bye for now.